All right. I just got an automatic tweet, so it sounds like we're in. Oh, we're live. So yeah, we're live. What's up, everybody? Or do I say that? Do I say that immediately? I always find streams odd because you gotta or do I say the the token gotta wait. Let's let the room fill up. Let's let the room fill up. I think normally yes. Uh, but that's like if you're just going live and there's no other plan. Okay. Like I think with us, since we, I think most of our viewers, like I think our very hardcores are live mm. um, and they're looking for the stream right now. So they're usually pretty early, but like most of our viewers, I think come the second day. So I feel like we can sometimes just jump right into things. Okay. Look at us Good. figuring things out on the fly, John. I like it. I like it. All right. So what's up? Smarter than you. What? We have a lot to get to today. Uh, another selfish celebrity decides to pass away on the day um, that we have our show, and it's another celebrity that I I've got no clue about. So we'll get to that. Uh, I'm also. I love, in, huh? I love this angle. What that I'm <laughs> irritated. I mean, you're like because I got a text like first thing today of you know Dustin Diamond dying. We'll, we'll jumping into it, but. What like your first reaction is? Oh man, it's on the day of the show, and Adam's gonna want to talk about this. This sucks. Right. Cool, because I know how much you it's Saved by the Bell, right? You, that's the one you you stand for. Yes, for sure, a hundred percent. Is it the one with Mario Lopez too? Sure, he's on it. Okay, so Dustin Diamond was <clears throat> Screech. Yes. Okay. I love that in addition to us talking about celebrity deaths, it's also it's also a history lesson. It's going into the time capsule for Mr. Von Tobel to learn who people are. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, Brady's got a really good point. You, you, the the make of your jib is throwing me off. Your um, hat looks super old. It is. It's old school. It's old school throwback. I also got a Red Wings ha- uh, shirt on, by the way. So I can Red Wings? Around. Are you allowed yeah. to wear it? I don't know. You cover the other team. Uh, very, very Detroit centric today, bro. Um, so yeah, uh, both go, uh, both go baseball hats today. Look at us. Well, because the, the see for me, my hair's getting out of control, and I gotta go get a haircut at some point. I'm gonna go this week, but like, I'm I'm getting tired of the hair. Just don't know what to do with it, but it is pretty flowing. Look at this. It's, 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 I mean, you got a, it's got a flow for sure. Why is one side so much longer? Well, it's not like this side's this side's long too. It's just that I had to do my hair for like these stupid hits I do for work. Okay, so it's all it's all long. Are you not getting a haircut for COVID reasons, or are you just like fuck it? I don't care. Okay, well, there it was the COVID for it, so. There's a couple of things. One, the, the lady who uh, the lady who cut my hair decided to be selfish and become like a doctor or a nurse or something stupid, um, so she doesn't cut hair anymore. Uh, and then on top of that, um, so there's COVID, and I just don't trust anybody to cut my hair, Adam. I've got so many bad haircuts. I think I've talked about this like a lot. Like I've gotten so many bad haircuts that I'm just I don't want to go. I don't want to go to great clips and get just absolutely butchered. I don't want to go anywhere else and just get abs- just destroyed. So I'm a little gun shy. I feel like you are. Even though you're just entering this phase, and people might think by your last name you've already been in the phase, I think you are in that stage of your life where you're going to go like super fancy, like with and my haircut. Not to like a not to like a high end salon type thing, but I think you're going to go to like one of those like men's club type places where you go in, they give you a beer, they you get like oh. you get like a massage, you get like a, a pedicure, and then they cut your hair like while you're doing all. So that. I've been offered that. I was told I was like, I go to this place, they do all those things. Like you should go here, and I my first my immediate response was, "Fuck no," because they don't focus on the hair. It's all about the other things. I need a stylist. I need a really good haircut. I'm willing to pay the price. Why? I went to, why, I do went to need, why do you why do you need to one get guy? Haircuts? I feel bad because like I went to one guy, and it turns out that he actually cuts the hair of somebody at V Sin. Oh boy, <laughs> and I. I hated the haircut. And you I went and talked at work about it. you talked at work about how much you hated it, and then it got back to him. Uh, I don't know because I never went back, but I did bring it on the air about how unsatisfactory the haircut was. He cuts Brady Cannon's hair. Oh no! <laughs> and I was like, I'm out. Can't do this. 
But did, so, I, I mean, I wonder if it ever got back to him. I'm sure it did. If you talked about it on the air, and then if Brady knew it was the same guy, he probably went and told him. I don't him. think so. I don't think I'm that popular, right? I don't think Brady listens. So I don't think he would have brought it back to the, the barber in name. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I think I might just shave my head again. I saw this right with that. Was that Ari who asked this question? I, I'm going to have to try to find. I got to find uh, old like high school pictures. Uh, Ari, to answer your question, yes. Uh, like my senior year of high school, I had like hair down to like here, like middle of the neck. Um, my first driver's license photo, uh, very long hair, almost shoulder length. The problem is that when my hair gets super long, it actually gets pretty wavy and curls up like, oh, yeah. on the ends. So, like, even when I had long hair, it was just like really big poofiness. Well, let me see if I can find one. I mean, you've seen you've seen my embarrassing long hair before, I'm sure. No, I haven't. Oh my god, dude! We Nick, well, Nick what are you talking about? You don't have hair. Yeah, what? Good barber. Look <laughs> <Yeah>. at <laughs> these locks, bro. I gotta have somebody Should... who knows how to take care of me, man. Yeah, I don't think like this is like somebody saying they can recommend a babysitter that doesn't have a kid. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, I mean, this is not this is not your expertise, Nick. I mean, we can can't we just assume that maybe Nick Nick had such a bad haircut he had to just shave it? They say that again. Can't we just assume that Nick had such a bad haircut at some point that he just had to oh. shave his head? Yeah, like I've done that before. I've been there, bro. We've all been there. Let's see. <laughs> Poor Nick. Sorry, you were just trying to make a recommendation. You're just trying to be nice, Nick. We're, we're not. We're not. I don't mean to destroy you, Nick. <laughs> I don't think that's what we're doing. No, I don't think. I don't think that was the point of Nick's comment. But right, really, okay. this is all. This is all just me wanting to talk about how nice my hair is because I do know that I have very nice hair. Very nice. Oh come on! It's thick. It's beautiful. It's Maybe it fine. won't be there one day. It does stop. Stop. My hair is awesome. Not now. What? Yes, it's thick and luscious. How many people would kill for this head? Thick, thick and luscious. Fine. I mean, it's kind of a, a disaster, though. I mean, it's not cut, but like, come on, bald guys in the bald guys in the room. Let's go. Look, look, <laughs> look, look at this. I feel like it's almost three Stooges oh, hair, like oof, right now. So nice. You want me to do? You want to do high school emo kid? Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> Like this? Yeah, that's a, I hate my life. I don't think I don't think Death. anybody would consider right now to be Death. You are my bitch lover. I don't think I don't think anybody would consider this to be glorious hair right now. Oh dude, it's so nice. Yeah, I mean the thick and luscious part, sure. Like I'm sure people are kind of jealous. Like right now it looks okay. Like you got you got something going right now. I like this look. No, so that's when, not are, people like this. when are you going to settle on a stylist then? Uh, I'm going to go this week. I have. So I'm going to try. I don't want to name names because I'm going to go there. Uh, but I am going to go to one spot um, that my cousin gets his hair cut at. And we'll okay. see if uh, we'll see if that's going to maybe be the remedy that I'm looking for here. How is your cousin's hair? So he's got it. It's a very, this is the thing that worries me. It's a very modern style. So like my cousin has it like essentially like a two on the sides and then like super long on top. And I'm not going for that. I think I want to keep the length. And that's the other part about this guys. I just don't know what kind of hairstyle I want. You know what I mean? I'm totally with it on that. Like, like this is a big time in my life here. You know, I'm a father. I'm 30. Like, what do I do? It, it is a tough call. Um, you also like, I don't think you can pull the move of um, like taking a picture from a magazine into the style and do it like this. Yeah. That's always a weird thing to me. What do you think? Or, like like picking... this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we should pick my. Okay, tell you what. We should. How do we do this? We should pick my hairstyle today and I will go into the barber. And I will tell them I want this cut. Will you commit to doing this though? It, if it's if it's not something ridiculously dumb, then yes. Like I'm not doing this. That's a shaved head. Yeah, that's, I mean that's Nick. That's yeah. Nick. <laughs> I don't know if I could pull this one off. 
Should I get the Patrick Mahomes? Um, like in the commercial, <laughs> the Mahomes. Yeah, guy? like if you, I mean, if you want to, what about this? What about this? Uh, this one, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> would you do that if we all decide we vote on here to get that? Would you get that done? I don't know if my hair's long enough for that one, though. Well, you got to grow it out maybe a couple more weeks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's that's also the other part about this. Um, Isabel is not happy. Like I can Why? tell, she just looked because she just wants it to get cleaned up like really bad. So, like you don't understand. Like at home, I wear like headbands, I wear hats. Like I try because <laughs> it's always in my face. Like I just I got to get it out of my face. Right. Yeah, that's true. I got you know, to get my boss's approval. Mm. It's, it's funny. There's like well, there's what? like there's so many sliding. So the, prob- the problem. The- the problem with this one that we're looking at, which obviously you're not going to have done, like that's not just something that you could get done and then it stays like that, right? Like you got to do that every day, right? That's such a pain, dude. That's a, such a commitment. What about this, I don't think you're going to do. Hmm. I mean, I hate it, but I think it would be funny. So my cousin's got hair like this. Okay, that's like that's kind of Bryce Harper. Yeah, about this. Okay. I mean, I feel like I feel like all these are like a commitment every day that you wouldn't actually no. want to want to make the field. Like the you, <laughs> yeah, you you need a hairstyle that's going to be easily manageable because if, just like you said, now like you don't on a day to day basis, all you're doing is like throwing a headband on or something. You're not like okay, this is not a <laughs> NSFW. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's disturbing. I mean, then you'd have to get the you'd have to get the chest hair and everything go along with it. <laughs> Which that's the real tricky part. Um, so I feel like you need something very manageable because you you haven't shown a commitment to. And I'm not saying I would, on, like, on a, but on a day to day basis, all you're doing is throwing a hat or a headband on or something. So you you need something that's not going to be like super fancy. You're not well, I mean, do I'll it. do my hair every day. It's just that now it's at a point where it's like so long that there's nothing to do with it, you know? Right. But some of these, I'm going to guess, like, I have no idea what it would take. Cause I've never been this person. You can pull that off. Like, I would guess some of these. You can't, I don't think you can pull that one off either. I would guess some of these are like, I'm thinking 45 minutes a day. Oh, to like start style them? Yeah. Yeah. Like some of these, one, some of these two, you need like, you know how you have like the hair dryer? But it's like it's not like the normal hair dryer where it's just cylindrical. It's got to be like that flat blower that like you know <laughs> gives right. you a real real good jet air jet. Right. So yeah, I think uh, simple, somewhat simple is better. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I've I've never, I've never been one to like go in and like, hey, do this or give me. The, it's like, yeah, put a two on the side and cut it like to an inch long on the top. Uh, let's go. Like, well, I'm that's not... the other part that, that bothers me is that, uh, what's it called? Half the time I go in and I'm like, hey, I don't know what to do with my hair. What would you recommend? And then they look at me like I have six heads. I'm like, aren't you the stylist? Like, shouldn't you be the one to help me here? <laughs> I've had that same issue. But I've I've kind of learned, like, they're just there. And, and, and again, if you decide, if you decide to go, and I don't know if this will work because, um, Screen quality isn't that great here, but let me see. Um, if you decide to go to a super fancy place, they're more likely to do that. But I feel like yeah. for the most part, it's not going to happen. It, like you, you need to you need to either go to a really fancy place and they'll help you out styling, or you just have to make a decision what you want and then just tell them very specifically, and then they'll just cut it that way. They don't really have a job. So I'm trying to hold my screen up. Can you can you see the hair here? Oh, I've seen this commercial. Yes, I've seen this picture. Yes. <laughs> I mean that is so glorious. Hair. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it is, is that not on your face. Glorious. Is that on your Facebook? Here, let me see. It's my Instagram. Uh, there's there's a Facebook one at a uh, with football hair, but that was like John Jones very excitedly uh, pointing out my awful hair. I don't know why. Like there was no reason for doing that either. Like I just one I just <laughs> kept growing it, and it got so curly and like greasy and long. It was weird. No. Um, like I do, do look like a '90s wrestler for sure. Wow, two the two pay fell off. Yikes! That's a look at some of the comments here. Um, yeah, '90s wrestler is a fair. That's a fair point. 
What if I got I, hair? And I don't even know why I did it. It just kept going. What if I got hair like this? Oh, that's quite a segue, John. First of all, RIP. Um, I uh, I got so many texts today from people like, how are you holding up? <laughs> are you serious? Yes. I was like, I'm fine. Like, yeah, I love... Sorry. Yeah. I'm trying to twist this in the... Oh, boy. What? So I will say that's also another thing is now I can do this a lot when I'm thinking like, oh, man. <laughs> it's true. Um, so, yeah, you, you, did, you did make that very impressive segue there, John. So, uh, yeah, Dustin Diamond passed away. Uh, Dustin Diamond from Save by the Bell, which I still kind of thought like came back for your era because it was in syndication for so long. Yeah, but what? So what? What was the? Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Who put the show out? Was it a Disney Channel show? Was it an ABC show? Was it was it, actually was it? An, it was actually an NBC show. Okay. Uh, it was Saturday morning show, and the concept. It's actually pretty impressive. If you go back, have you have you seen an episode at all, dude? I've not seen a single episode at all. Wow, that's crazy. That is kind of crazy. So, um, do you have Peacock, the the streaming the streaming app? No. All right. I was gonna say to try to, to watch one episode, but if you uh, uh, maybe even call up because because what I'm gonna tell you here, like I'm gonna do a little brief history list of see what about. Um, but if you if you can call up like just a scene, not that you don't have to put it on the on the broadcast because I think most people have seen it. Um, but just call up like a, any scene from Say by the Bell to get an a, a understanding of what I'm talking about here. So they created the show because Saturday mornings were all about cartoons, right? Like mm-hmm. all every kid watched cartoons. They were all in on Saturday mornings. But then after they became like you know preteens and even you know teenagers, um, then you lose them on Saturday morning. They're like, well, how do you keep kids around on Saturday morning? Um, you give them a show that is more geared to them, but kind of has the look of a cartoon in a way. So if you if you ever watch an episode of Saved by the Bell, it is incredibly bright colors all over the place. There's a lot of like weird shapes in some of the scenes. So like if you look at this, like bright colors everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um when uh, when they do like the opening credits, you see like all the di- all the cartoonish like shapes at the max. It's kind of like cartoonish like scene. That's where they hang out, John. On the, at the there's somehow a like a diner on campus that they all hang out at. Okay, and like the like they end up getting jobs there, and like the manager is like part of their lives. It's a whole it's a whole thing. Um, but yeah, this so the, the whole thing was um, it was kind of like a way for the network to keep kids around after they got too old for cartoons. Um, so, so that was kind of the concept. So it was a Saturday morning show on NBC, um, just became incredibly influential. Uh, everybody of a certain age, and I guess it's people much older than you (laughs) watched it. Um, Screech was the idiot, the buffoon. So he was the the jester. (laughs) Yes. Okay. A hundred percent. Comic relief. Oh yeah. Um, and then, and he's like the one that really didn't go on to do anything else. So it's, and it's, he's kind of in a weird spot because like, so if for, in this scene, so from, from left to right, and actually there's no Kelly in this, in the scene. So kind of a, a rough one to pick John, cause she's the, she's the true superstar. Oh, uh, Mario, <laughs> Mario Lopez on the left, you know him, obviously he's gone on to a quite a career. Um, he's done a lot of things. Um, Jesse Spano is the, Kind of the very smart girl, popular, but kind of awkward at times. Um, Elizabeth Berkeley. So she's second. She's gone on to a bunch of different shows, but she actually did. Uh, she tried to do showgirls to like get out of the typecast of being from Saved by the Bell. This is who you're looking for? Yeah, good one. That's good. <laughs> Clearly, you see why she was the star of the show. <laughs> But to what your point is, a lot of colors, right? Of Weird course, shapes, yeah, yeah. All that the kind shapes of stuff. on the dress, yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, Tiffany Amber Thiessen, she went on to a lot of things, you know, not to an O, a bunch of other shows too. Uh, Mark Paul Gosselar, who was the star, you know, nerdy, preppy surfer boy, um, he went on to a bunch of things. Lark Voorhees didn't do a whole lot. I think she did some more behind the scenes stuff, and 
Um, but at least you you see her around on some of like the when they gather together and get together and stuff. But like Dustin Diamond, I don't know if there's the show that messed him up or if he just kind of messed up. I know that's from listening to to Zach Morris's podcast, which I think is very very good. Um, he like you, as I call him Zach Morris, Mark Paul Gosselaar, um, he like you, John, had never seen an episode of the show. He's yeah, the star, the star of the show. Really? Um, so it's a uh, Zach to the future is the uh, the name of the podcast, and he just kind of goes back, and now he's re- he's watching it for the first time and commenting on it. Um, and one of the things that he pointed out was that Dustin Diamond was younger than all of them by like a couple of years. And at that point in your life, like, you know, a year and a half is like a huge difference. So like everybody else was so much more mature than him. Um, it's a good B roll here. Yeah. Good, that's good. What a producer you are. Brother. Right. That's tremendous. Um, and so like, it was just kind of awkward for him. And I think the show kind of messed him up a little bit in that way. Like while the other, all the other kids were going through certain parts of their life, like he was just a little bit behind them. Um, so it was, it was kind of weird for him, but anyway, his <laughs> Mr. Belding, Dennis Haskins, for sure, is the principal uh, on the show. And he actually stayed around. So there's a lot of incarnations, John. Actually, Stay by the Bell uh, was it started off as a show called Good Morning Miss Bliss, which is a middle school show. Um, yeah, also Leah Remini was the daughter of Mr. Carosi. They uh, they worked at the Malibu, Malibu Sands Beach Club there he where is. the kids all ended up working together. There's the great Dustin Diamond. Um, who you see you just see, he's just so was he a main <laughs> character or was he oh, one yeah. of those like was like did he was he a secondary character who evolved into a main no, character? No, no, no. No, no, no. Six main characters. And there was a lot of periphery characters. Actually, a lot of the peripheral characters went on to a lot of things. I mean, obviously, um Eddie, everyone's. I think I'm gonna say if you're between like 34 and 45, that was the case for every single every single guy. Um, no, there, there's six main characters. See, this is the max. This is what they're hanging out at. Um, this, by the way, so at, there was a point in my life, John, where I would be, I could probably get every Say by the Bell trivia question anybody could ask proper. I can get it right. But I've not seen the show in a long time. I really have not watched it. So um, my knowledge is kind of gone uh, on the show a little bit. But um, yeah, it, it, I think it just. Dustin Diamond was kind of left behind. So when everybody else kind of went on some success afterwards, which is kind of rare for a show like this, for everybody to be kind of successful, um, he still, he wasn't really in that group. Um, this is when they were getting their SAT scores, by the way. Um, and so... I couldn't tell uh, by the Save by the Bell SAT score episode. Oh, it is? Yeah, oh, it shit, I, did, I didn't see that. <laughs> um, I thought it was... I thought I was flexing some say with the bell. Right. <laughs> I didn't look at that. I didn't look at the caption. Um, and so I, I think it was probably tough for him to kind of watch what everybody else did and what he was like. So I went and played this ridiculous nerd character. Uh, and I was just a buffoon every week. And then now that's just what I am. Right. Like this kind of sucks. Like it, when a show gets iconic, that happens. Uh, he was able to kind of glob on to some of the follow-up franchises. So like I said, it started off as a middle school show. Then they had to make it a high school show. And they actually moved it. Good Morning Miss Bliss was like in Indiana. And all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, this isn't going to work. So they moved them to uh, to California because they thought it would be hipper and a cooler spot for a high school show to happen. So all of a sudden, all these same students were then in California together in high school. But then they had Say by the Bell, the new class, which was you know a bunch of new kids that came in and – Screech was uh, was like the assistant principal. Uh, they had said by the Bell college years, which these same casts were on. Screech was on that. Oh boy, um, they tried to squeeze this turnip, huh? Dude, it was so massive. Like they had to. Uh, but Screech never really did much outside of that. Now he did do like some weird celebrity boxing type things. Right, I remember um, that. He tried to capitalize on a little bit of that, but I, so I just look, think I, I, looking back, I'm, I'm going to cut to the, the the meat of this. Is the fact that the only thing that I know about Dustin Diamond are all unsavory and negative things? Yeah, and, and I, so I, I think I think that's what I'm getting to is that like everybody else went to, went on to some good things, and he had to kind of watch and be like, "Well, this sucks for me." Um, now, I think what you could do is, "Hey, I had a good run," but that's not really what he did. He kind of spiraled in a lot of ways and um, just kind of had a, a tragic story that ended way too early, obviously, with the the cancer diagnosis and the death today at 44. 
Um, it, it, but I had, like, like I said, I had a bunch of people reach out that it really affected, and they were like, hey, are you feeling this? And I was like, you know, I'm really kind of not. I don't know why. Um, oh, fucking Jeff. Jeff swoops in. College guy swoops in, steals Kelly. Um, I'm 30, Brady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I think it, it's a tragic story, but it didn't really impact me much because I think he was out of the public eye for so long. But the weird thing, and, and I had a friend point this out. He said, like, we didn't get that. This is it's this is a ridiculous thing to say. I get it, but I'll I'll just say it anyway. You didn't get that like appreciation period. Like we found out he was sick. What like three weeks ago? Oh, really? And I think you know publicly that's when it was like, oh, Dustin Diamond is sick. And so I think when when somebody has you know cancer. Uh, that's been like a celebrity or in the, at least in the public eye, usually you hear it. And then like, you know, six months or a year later, whatever, they might die if they're in, if they're at that advanced stage and you kind of have that time to like look back at their career and like appreciate them a little bit or whatever. Like Screech never really got that chance. No. It was like, oh, he's sick and he's gone. And, like, and that's like Chadwick Boseman, right? Well, yeah, oh, Chadwick we, Boseman, we, we, we never had no heard. idea. I had no yeah. idea whatsoever. At least, you know, the collective we, and then all of a sudden, it's like Chadwick Boseman passed away today. You're like, what? Yeah, but I think what, Chad, it, what happened? Chadwick Boseman was like massive until the end. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I'm thinking more of like these people that are, have not been in the public eye really that you like forgot about. They're out of your consciousness, and all of a sudden you're like, wait, that person's sick, and then you want to like go back and like appreciate their work. Um, and you know, you have a little bit of time to like appreciate what their impact was on on pop culture on society, but then you you just never really got that and, and i know that sounds weird talking about screech but like i said this show john and i don't know what the i don't know what the show is for like kids of your age you know people of your age like what it was what the cultural phenomenon impact impactful show would have been but i'm telling you like th- there is a large it's like a 10 year span where like everyone was obsessed with the show it was the biggest thing on tv hmm. well and I, I think it's pretty fair like i think i just wasn't I just didn't know when it was on and I didn't I didn't have anybody showing me this show or anything like that. I don't think it's yeah, an age like, thing. I might have just missed it. You know what I mean? If you had like an older brother or something. Right. Like I didn't really have anybody in the family who really watched it. So I, I think that's probably also why I missed it because if it's as widely syndicated as you say, and like I I've seen it on television. You know what I mean? I have I have images of seeing this show on TV, but I've never sat down and, and watched an episode. Now, uh, Clarissa who, explains it all. I've seen that many times. Of course, I so have I. <laughs> Sadly, right. And, and I mean, she, gosh, she did a lot of shows too. I mean, she's she's consistently been on television. Uh, Melissa Joan Hart has consistently been on television for like her whole life. I think Melissa Joan Hart was like my first like the crush that I can remember. Really, I think it was Clarissa, or was it Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Oh, Sabrina, come on. <laughs> And then uh, uh, you drive me Brady, crazy. No, I, it, even Stevens. If that was a um, a Disney show, correct? I was not a Disney watcher. Never. Nope. So what about what about Boy Meets World? Nothing. Never seen an episode. Wow. Just, Which one's that one? From two Who's completely that? different. Uh, that is. So do you know who Fred Savage is? Uh, you know, let's look this up now. I know the name. Oh my god! But I, I can't tell you. So Fred Savage was Fred Savage was was one of, was on one of the bigger shows on television, The Wonder Years. Okay, which is probably also foreign to you. Yes, which is like Saved by the Bell is is awful, but it's this guy, beloved. This, this guy does not look familiar at all. Okay, um, Saved by the Bell. <laughs> Saved by the Bell is awful, but beloved. Like it's not. I would never call it like a great show. It was just such an, a cultural phenomenon, impactful for a lot of people's lives. The Wonder Years was an incredible show. That's just a this very, very good. good show. This yeah, picture looks familiar. Yeah. Um, so, so, so he was on this massive show, Wonder Years, and all of a sudden, this new show comes out, Boy Meets World, and it's his younger brother Ben Savage, who kind of looks yeah. similar, okay. He's like the same looking person. Uh, and you're like, wait a minute, Fred Savage has a little brother, but no, that show was really good. And, and I will say that uh, I think my uh, my no, my junior year of high school, uh, the proficiency exam, which I think still happens for Nevada high school kids, you have to write. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Do, do, do we to, believe that this is Ari? I didn't even notice it was Ari, but I'm, I'm going to take his word for it. We got to fact check this one. Yeah, we do. Um, 
the proficiency test, you have to. One of the questions was write an essay of a TV character that you feel you relate to, and it was Ben Savage's character in Boy Meets World. Okay, uh, just was like baseball obsessed, like I was at that age. Um, a lot of the things that he went through are like things that I thought I went through. Like that's, but that's what all shows are. You don't realize that at the time, but um, all shows are just like what normal people go through on a day to day basis. Uh, but yeah, that that was a, just a really good show. So, but and the reason this ties into Say by the Bell, John, mm-hmm. is the the great debate of that era. I mean, you could probably Google it right now, and there will probably be thousands of entries. Was Kelly from Say by the Bell or Topanga? From Boy Meets World. That well, there you go. I guess the debate's going on in the comments. <laughs> so Kelly, Kelly versus Topanga was like the great debate of that era. Okay, let's see. Like, who do you got? Like, I mean, that was that was crazy. Uh, the debates that you would spark, and there were just two. Like Kelly was like the all American, like cheerleader type girl, and Topanga was like kind of the the hippie, uh, kind of free spirit. So like two very different personalities. Okay. And uh, and just the two, the two like the great debate of there. Who I'm gonna check the comment section and see what uh, as you're looking there. Um, if we're having a good debate about Kelly versus <laughs> Kelly versus Topanga. Uh, oh, Ari was wrong about the date. That's sad. There Topanga you go. Does, yeah. See, K- Kelly or Topanga. That's the uh, the great debate from that time. Can I sound this up? There you go. So are, these are, are the you, two people, huh? Yeah. These, these are the two people. <laughs> <laughs> this is, dude, you're just like, all of this goes over my head. I mean, you're you're learning a lot about the uh, late 80s, early 90s culture, I think, uh, or I guess more 90s, really, culture. Yeah. Um, did you make a vote in the uh, Kelly versus Topanga? Uh, let's see. I don't want to plant my flag here. On something that I don't know much about, I will say Kelly. Yeah. It, it, well, and here's the thing: on pure looks, I think it's a pretty easy call, and that's what you're going off because you're just taking a look right here. Mm-hmm. Um, the the characters, I think, were what kind of makes it a little bit closer. But yeah, Kelly, it looks there's no no real that question. A, uh, that was a Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide type of kid. How about oh, that? Get that one? There you go. Nobody gets that one. <laughs> Somebody in the chat got to get that reference. So, you know, the um, I'm trying to think of who have you seen? Well, she's been in a bunch of different roles. You don't watch The Walking Dead. The um, Selena, how about Selena on Netflix? Nothing. Oh, the uh, yeah, the movie. No, 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 the one that's come out uh, recently. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I did actually see that. The, the series. Yeah, she's Selena in the show. Yeah, she's Selena. She's in there. Um, I was a, I was a big fan of her when I was a kid. Yeah, see, Nick gets me. There we go. Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide, bro. Was that a cartoon? No, it was like a. It was like you know everything you're talking about, like a a junior, like a junior high type sitcom type deal. Rachel from Boy Meets World. I don't know who that is. Brady, anything Boy Meets World? Uh, anything Saved by the Bell? Nothing. What? What did, did Rachel say that she became a porn star? Because I think that's what happened with Rachel. Oh, okay. Got nothing. Um, yeah, I believe she did. I think that's what that if she was like she was only on when they got to college. Drake and Josh, nothing. I I mean I I'm familiar with the show. That's a Nick show, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, I grew up as a Nick kid. I was a Nickelodeon kid. None of this garbage. <laughs> Even Stevens and Boy Meets World. None of that. So Christian Serratos, that's the lady's name? Yes. There we go. Yeah. Boom. It's, uh, it's impressive. No question. See? She was, a, yeah. she was a like a teenage actress? Yeah, she was she was in that show and then like she kind of disappeared for a minute and then she popped back up in uh what's it called? The the Walking Dead, and then now she's getting roles like that with Selena. Yeah, I had a big thing for her when I was a kid too. Uh, yeah, looking. I mean, looking at the photos, I'm not surprised. All right, Brady, are you trying to say all of that? Oh not boy, all out, all, all out. You're trying to say all of that? <laughs> like, I said, like the child version of SNL, essentially. 
that's what that was yeah pretty much like all that was oh. just like a bunch of kid like comedy actors and they would do a bunch of skits that's how amanda i think if i remember correctly that's how amanda Bynes got her big like come up i think she was originally part of all that and then she got the amanda show and that was the amanda show actually wasn't terrible job it, it wasn't there there were some <laughs> It was really volatile. You know what I mean? Like the highs were really high, but the lows were like super low. I want to, this may be controversial to say. I don't know. Amanda Bynes was on track to be like a really, really good comedic actress. Yeah, dude. Like she was going to be very, very good. And she went completely off the rails. But she actually, I thought she had several roles where she was really good. Uh, obviously, they gave her a couple of movies at a pretty young age to kind of feature in and star in. Well, she, yeah, was it, she had all that was like her big one or whatever it was, the soccer one. Yeah, that and then she had the what the one where she was like she was like royalty or she was British, yep. you know, descendant of royalty, whatever she was. She had to go over to England. Um, yeah, I mean those those movies were not like they're not good. I'm not going to be like oh you got to go watch these; they're good movies. But she was good in them, I thought. And and as you said, like the Amanda Show, getting a show like that at like that's focused on you yep. Um, to, to showcase as a comic actress more than just a regular actress. Like that's, that's a pretty impressive move and it, it wasn't bad and crazy that she went the way that she went. That, that is kind of nuts. And maybe there's still hope for her at some point down the road. I don't know, but that was a, that was quite a trajectory that she was on there for a while. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, and that, that's in like when I grew up, like that's what I watched, right? Like, I was watching like Nickelodeon shows, Keenan and Kel, right? Like I actually thought it was pretty cool um, that um, dang, what's his name? Uh, is it Keenan or Kel who's dude, on Saturday Night dude, Live? Where the fuck is Kel? Right, I don't know, but so <laughs> Keenan Thompson, that's right. Like he, the, the, when I saw the Keenan Thompson, he's getting his own like I think like nightly sitcom, is he not? Like that's going to be on like NBC at some point. Like that was pretty cool because that's a guy who can I connect with to my childhood, right? Like that's a guy who I watched when I was a little kid. Watched Keenan and Kel, loved Good that burger. show. Right, yeah, Good Burger was so cool. Like the the, the movie it was absolutely fantastic. Those are the kind of shows that I like. I will connect with, or like you know, and I think it all kind of ties back to what I would watch as a kid. Like wasn't a big Disney Channel kid and anything like that, but Melissa Joan Hart, Keenan Thompson, Kel. Wait, but do you, guys, do you feel yeah. bad that Keenan has gone out of such great heights, and I don't even know where you could find Kel now? I mean, it's kind of a personal choice, though, right? Person, I just don't think want to get a famous. job. I nah, he was think good. I he may have seen that. I may have seen that they had a falling out, and Keenan was like, "Well, fuck you! I'm not helping you with anything." Really? I might just make be making this up too. It's gonna go Keenan and Kel beef. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I think. I think that uh, there was like something with uh, Kel where he said he hadn't talked to him in a long time. Oh yeah, Keenan, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, so. So that's kind of different because it's only two instead of six. But like Dustin Diamond was the Kel. Yeah. Like Dustin Diamond just got left out and now he's dead. Like it would it would kind of suck if Kel died. Oh, of course. No, or Kel. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'd be <laughs> devastated. Loved ham, loved orange soda, brought me through my childhood. Did you also consume those things because he liked them? Or I think orange soda for sure. I'm sure I was like partially influenced as a kid. Like I used to love orange soda. I mean, I still do. Who doesn't like orange soda? I mean, I love uh, orange soda. Isn't orange soda like a like you have to be in the mood for it? <laughs> what? Like what kind I have a statement is that? I feel like it's like it's very aggressive. It's a very aggressive drink. No, you know it's aggressive. There's a lot of the fruit, like the fruit sodas. Strawberry soda is aggressive. Out of all of the fruit sodas, strawberry soda is the most aggressive fruit soda. Like, I mean, I th- you really think- got to be in the mood for strawberry soda. I think grape. Grape is a pretty strong. You're like, whoa, okay. Nah, grape's really good. <laughs> of course. You can be really good and aggressive, I feel like. No, no, no. I- I'd feel like aggressive meaning if you. <laughs> it is pretty aggressive. I, I think it's like if you had a you had a blindfold and someone's like, "Oh, here's a drink," and you, you taste it. Whoa, okay, all right. <laughs> I, I wasn't I wasn't ready for that. Like that, I think that's what I'm referring to. And I feel like orange soda will just like it'll kind of get you. You're like, "Oh, okay, I, I like this," but wow, all right. Nah, I think <laughs> not on the not on the board. No, okay? I'm it's not. Right. Strawberry soda is it's one of those sodas that's very rare that is not regularly. 
Like I would think that grape soda ranks ahead of the frequency of appearances in the cooler than strawberry soda, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, so like that's why strawberry soda, it's a little too aggressive because the flavor it's way too sweet. It's super fizzy. It seems to be fizzier than the rest of the sodas. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? Well, well, to make it, up for the lack of popularity. But to your point, like you're never just getting a strawberry soda. Like you're not like no. you're not hanging out at somebody's house and they're like, hey, what do you want? Like uh, we got water, we got some soda. coffee, got a strawberry soda. Like a strawberry soda is something you go out and buy specifically because you want a strawberry right. soda. Wait, you're high <laughs> and you're like, strawberry soda sounds great right now. Nobody's ever just offering you a strawberry soda. Because if they did, you'd be like, wait, what? That's you probably choice? leave. You'd probably leave, especially if it was you and oh. just that person. They were just like, yeah, I got water and I got strawberry soda. And you're like, what the fuck? I'm well, sorry. Why, would, why wouldn't you just accept the water and just stay? Uh, it's weird if you just got those two. If you have <laughs> strawberry soda, it's weird. Okay. I'll, t- I'll take your word for that one. That's fine. By the way, the sneaky good soda that I fell in love with one summer when I went to Arizona to visit my grandmother when I was a kid. Um, Cactus Cooler is like the best fucking soda on the planet that nobody talks about. Isn't it just like Mountain Dew? No, it's like, it's. I guess you could call it that. I think it's got like mango-y melon uh, flavors as opposed to Mountain Dew, whatever you want to call like Mountain Dew's flavor. I guess mountain flavored. Cactus Cooler is incredible. Okay, now I will, I will, I will ask you this. Oh, man, let's see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you very rarely find a Fresca too, but I'll tell you this: my aunt Fre- used to drink Fresca like all the okay. time, and I remember I tried it once because I was like, "Dude, she drinks this all the time. This has got to be bomb," and it sucked. No, my it doesn't aunt, suck. Oh uh, yeah, my fine. aunt was very. Uh, she was wrong. It's kind of refreshing. It's nice. No, it squirts better. I'll t- I'll take, I'll take a fresh. You know, I'd like have a fresco right now. I'd like, wait until I get one. It's like Carl's um, Jr.'s bomb. They, they're the ones that rarely have a squirt on tap. That's, that's a nice treat. <laughs> um, now, if you want to talk aggressive, John, with sodas, have, are you familiar at all with Fago? No, what is this? Spell it. All right. F A Y G O. Okay. Just do Fago flavors. You, th- like I know it because it's like huge in Michigan, and I don't really know if you could get it anywhere outside of Michigan. I'm sure yeah. there's like they've spread out around the Midwest because it's so big in Michigan. But like, I'm telling you that they have some flavors of soda where you're like, wait, what is this? Um, the Fago oh, Moon yeah. Mist. Oh yeah, but the key, I mean, key, there's there's so many of them. Like I don't oh, even yeah. know what that blue one is. Cream soda. No, go back. You son of a bitch. Find your Fago. Oh, you can get it like shipped to you, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Oh, apparently. All right. Maybe we should get some of these. Because I'm telling you, there's like a double chocolate cake Fago. What? And you might think, hey, I like soda and I like cake. So fruit uh, punch. You'd be wrong. Rock and rye. What is that? That's like a big one. What I've is never that? had it. It's like, it's kind of like a so more. The- Bitter ginger ale, maybe uh, it's. It, uh, I don't like it. Pineapple orange is more like uh, cactus cooler. Like that's what it is, not Mountain Dew. Okay. You know? Okay. Okay. Jazz and blues berry. <laughs> it's a, that's a nice blueberry. Arnold Palmer. Okay, that that's see, I don't think that thinks a new one. That's diet a... tonic isn't tonic just like tonic? How do you get diet tonic? Yeah, uh, that's a that is a mystery. I feel like there's nothing in tonic. And a lot of sparkling waters here. Yeah, like look really, at them. they have tonic, and then they have diet tonic. Like what's they the really ex- they really expanded their horizons. Look, like, let's keep how, going here. How popular do you have to get to like really Sun. flex like this? Like, wouldn't you just find your like your top four? I don't just know. Kind of make this, those. Oh boy, I feel like I'm a kid again because now I'm going back over my head like all these old drinks that I used to have. Remember Propel? <laughs> yes, the Remember water Propel. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Whatever happened to Propel? How about, I mean, like right now, I can't even talk. I'm drinking a Replenish Zero. It's a 7 Eleven. It's a 7 Eleven branded oh, but um, thing. It's great. Fago. Whenever they go, Fago. Moon <laughs> Mist. <laughs> so the uh, I think cherry banana? I think cherry red pop 
is like the big Fago flavor, if I remember my childhood properly. Well, um, Fago oh, was is. made. Fago was made popular. Those are strawberries, uh, though. Those are not cherries. Yeah, good point. Fago is made popular by uh, Insane Clown Posse. Oh, really? Yeah, they were big Fago guys. <laughs> I, I feel like that's not how you want to be described in your life. I'm a big Fago. <laughs> There you go. It's good. There you go. Propel made by Gatorade. Sugar free. So we got any uh Propel was good. The lemon flavor? That was the shit. So Verner's people are pointing out um on here. Uh yeah, it's like a it's a, it's a like a specialty ginger ale type thing. Um that is a that's a big Michigan drink too. That was I mean my family loves Verner's. Really, my dad, my dad's side of the family, my dad in particular, loves Verner's. It's, it's I, I feel bad for him because he, he, so he told me he watched the show I think last week, and he was just looking for anything he could comment on, and he never found anything. <laughs> and now this week we're talking about his favorite beverages. <laughs> 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 You really, really missed out on the opportunity. I think everybody knows about RC Cola. I, I will say this. So when I used to deliver bounce houses in high school, the um, the owner of the, uh, uh, what's it called? The company. It was like a family-owned business. But to, you know, to save up, they, they would buy us like sodas and they would keep them on the fridge. But it was all like this, the, you know, the off-brand sodas. RC Cola was really good. <laughs> like I used to oh. drink a lot of RC Cola back in the day, a Dr. Brown, like all that stuff. Those are good. Those are I'm totally gonna make worth- the, I'm gonna make the case because people think RC Cola is like a, a generic, like non-brand or whatever. Like RC Cola is a real brand. And I, I will make the case RC Cola was just not as good at marketing as Coke and Pepsi, because I think RC Cola is a better drink. Yeah. I mean, I've really I, come around on Coca-Cola. You have? I have. Over Pepsi? Oh, yeah. Mm. I think Pepsi I, is uh, the worst of the colas. What about, as somebody just pointed out, were you ever familiar with Crystal Pepsi? I, I know it. Like I, well, and I know what it is. Part of the reason why I know what it is is because, remember that, uh, I learned a lot of my history on the, the VH1's docuseries. I love like the 80s, 90s. Of course. All that stuff. So, Which, by the way, were so brilliant. And they so need to come back because those were awesome. But, yeah, I remember – I only remember Crystal Pepsi because of those. Did it taste like Pepsi? Yeah. But like, so it, it was white, the, but it, it was clear, but it tasted like Pepsi, huh? Yeah, but what's the point? Like, I mean, that's a that's obviously just a marketing gimmick. But, yeah, it's it's just – Either drink a Sprite or drink a Pepsi. Who cares what the fuck color it is? I got a buddy who who's a he's a big Chargers fan, and he went to a Chargers game one time, and you know he was a, a vehemently vehemently in the camp of Coca Cola, like fuck Pepsi, Pepsi sucks, <laughs> Coca Cola all the way, and they had a blind taste test at a Chargers game, and it was between the Cokes. And so they gave him the blind taste test, and he thought that Pepsi tasted better in the blind taste test. And since that day, he's firmly entrenched to the Pepsi camp. Fuck Coke. <laughs> Pepsi's the shit. I don't understand being like hardcore either way. But you just said you much prefer Coke to Pepsi. Like from I a don't... taste perspective, but like, you know, like if it's the only thing, like, yeah, it's not like a, I don't support Pepsi. You know what I, I mean? Yeah, I don't drink soda. Like I haven't drank in a while. But like mm-hmm. when I did, I, I was like, yeah, if you go to the restaurant, like oh, I'll have a Coke. Like, oh, we only have Pepsi. Like, okay. Like the no. people that are like, the, no, I don't want a soda. Like, what? No. come on, just That's drink the, the fucking Pepsi. That's you know, the what worst. are we doing? This is, this is I, insanity. When I used to work at the, so when I worked at Red Rock, when I did the, um, um, when I worked at Starbucks, I was a Red Rock employee, so I would have to fill in in certain spots. So I'd work like the bowling alley snack bar. I'd work, you know, the Ben and Jerry's. And so, like the bowling alley snack bar, it was all just Pepsi products. You get, oh, dude, I would get that all the time. Oh, uh, sorry, we only have Pepsi products. Are you serious? Like, yeah, bitch. I actually went back there and told them, <laughs> let's let's sign up for just Pepsi so I can fuck this lady who came in here who really loves her Coke products. Like, yes, it's me. The guy in the orange fucking polo and black apron. I'm the one who did it. I'm sorry. Like, I hate people like that. I don't I just don't get it. Like if you if you're the one for a soda. Like the difference is not that great. There's a, there's a slight difference in the product, of course. It's two different products, 
But it's not that great if you if you want one, you just can't have the other one. Right. Now, were well, you? You, know, go ahead. you know who? You know who the worst though? Can I have a Dr Pepper? Oh, we only have Mr Pip. No thanks. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the same soda. It, it, there's almost no difference. There you go. We only have. I, I prefer Pib Extra, not Mister Pib. So ridiculous. So Pepsi is supposedly a bit sweeter. Yes, that's kind of their. I think that's why. I, that's, that's why I don't like it as much. So, are you familiar with the whole controversy of New Coke? No. What is this? So, at, at some point, I think it was like mid eighties. Um, Coke oh, had yeah. been. Coke had been that. like the shit. Coke was like dominating everyone. And then they started realizing like, oh, Pepsi came around and they started taking a lot of their customers because people because it was sweeter. Like th- that's what people thought. Oh, I like this a little bit better. So Coke like reorganized and like reformulated, like, all right, we're coming out with a new, we're changing our recipe, new Coke. And Damn. it was a total fucking flop. <laughs> Just a total disaster. I actually learned about this at school because we were learning about brands and they talked about that. There was like a chapter on it and like how big of a, like a, how much of a colossal mistake it was that oh, Coke yeah. tried to do that. Oh, yeah. And they infuriated people. They had to go back real quick. And then they, but then I think they brought it back like last year. Ari, that's the best. What are you talking about? Like barmaid cherry Cokes, a, uh, I think Roy Rogers is the term. Um, far that's, better than just a regular cherry coke, <laughs> right? That's yeah. like the better version. There's not even with, a comparison, right? With the maraschino cherries, like, are you serious? Has already ever gotten one like food take right? I know, like, what are we doing? <laughs> like never. Come on, man. Oh, I mean, it's bad enough that he was wrong about the Wonder Years. That's right. <laughs> How come you, you try to give us a good fact? You just, just throw that in there. I don't even know what this is for, Aaron, but thanks. I, you know, it's, it's the right way. Yeah. Um, what about did it just re- that just reminded me of the Shirley Temple one did too? Uh, did were you you were too young for it? I guess I think, but like when for, there was like a three year stretch in the alcohol realm where like a Smirnoff Ice was what everybody was drinking. Oh yeah, they loved it. The and, high school uh, parties, that's all that was available. Loved it. And Remember then, when you I, would ice people? <laughs> you would what would you how would you do that? Like or like when you would have like essentially you would like find sneaky ways to get them to like hold, like like you'd give them a shoebox, be like, here, bro, I got you new shoes. And then they would open it and it would be a smearing off ice, and then you had to like take a knee and like chug it in that spot. <laughs> what? You don't remember this? This is not something that ha- this is a Gorman thing. No, this is a thing that like people would do. Are you saying right. people? Chat. I, I don't know if that's a proper term. Chat. Tell me if I'm wrong, or maybe if, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe it was just the people that I knew. But I so uh, they, would, they would present you with a smeared off ice in like a weird way, and then right. you'd have to take it and drink it right on the spot. Right. What if you're like at church or something? Well, I mean, it's that that you got to do it, <laughs> or it's, it's in the middle of school. Thing. Yeah, the middle of school, you'd have to do it. All right. I mean, I guess this is. I mean, you're potentially getting like expelled for uh, for the sake of a weird bit, I guess. Got to do what you got to do, bro. Now, did you? Uh, what was the best way you ever iced someone? There you go. See. Oh my god, bros icing bros dot com. <laughs> <laughs> like it was a typical like a, a bro because that was like a culture thing back then. I don't know if bros are still a thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was like it was a bro thing. I was never a bro, but it was uh, cool. that's debatable. No, never a bro. But like, why? Why smeared off ice? I told you. I, I, I believe know. you now. I mean, I see all this, but like, I don't understand how smeared off ice got to like. First of all, two things I don't understand about it. How did? <laughs> that's, <great. laughs> that's awesome. A. How did Smirnoff Ice get so popular so fast? But oh, well, that's B, easy. No, hold on. Okay, but it might be easy to explain. But B, how did it drop off the map so quickly? Yeah. Well, so I think I have my explanation for both of them. Okay. Well, one, 
is the reason why it got so popular is because it got popular amongst high school children because it was alcohol that you could easily drink, right? It was palatable sure. alcohol. Uh, not everybody was a baller like me and started drinking whiskey, you know, way back in the day. Um, so so this, not, to, not to cut you off, but would this be, this is just the, you know, early 2000s version of White Claw or like the Seltzers? Right. I, I would I would assume so. Yes. Okay. You know what I mean? And like, even now I would say like the seltzers, I, I mean, I guess high school kids like them. I don't know. I'm not in high school, um, nor do I know any high school children, but I would assume just like remembering my high school palette and the people that I grew up with, that even the white claws wouldn't be as popular with high school kids because they were still very strong. Like you have, to, it's an acquired taste. I believe like the reason why the Smirnoffs got so big is because it was like Sprite. It was like Sprite with alcohol. And you could kind of taste, but not really. And I remember the first time drinking, I was like, is there really anything in this? You know, but I think what happened and why it didn't, you know, why it kind of died out was because everybody caught on. Mike's Hard Lemonade came out. Like there was all sorts of different. Of more addition. palatable alcohols. Right. And so then all of a sudden you get competition. It's like anything else. It peaks and then boom. I, I will say, I, I think the one of the other issues is that like it, it was. Like, uh, you would get kind of, at least in, in our crew, like, I know, like, uh, anybody was drinking a Smirnoff ice around, like, humans. Just, <laughs> oh, he probably like, might have. <laughs> he, like, punched them. And I know that uh, a good a good friend of, uh, of me and Steve's, uh, who's just one of the most, like, sometimes people say they don't, you know, they don't care what other people think or whatever. This person is absolutely the I don't give a crap what anybody ever thinks. He started asking, and this all this all popped in my mind because somebody mentioned grenadine earlier. Um, he started just asking at bars for Smirnoff ice, Smirnoff ice with grenadine added to it. That and sounds I'm, pretty good, actually. I'm going to tell you, it's one of the greatest things I've ever had in my life. But we were drinking them at a bar one night, and humans just lost it on us. And I don't think I ever had one again. Here we go. Let's see. I got peer pressure. Is somebody going to ice somebody here? Yeah, somebody's going to get iced real quick. Okay. And when you you know when you get iced at him, the law states that you must abide. Of course. Oh, What's up, bro? We should, What's up, we bro? Oh, this. bro, bro, you I bro, you gonna do this to me, bro? I'm in the airport, bro. Oh, bro, just got back from Florida State, bro. <laughs> Can't even open it. Let's go. Look at looking around. Looking around. It's so dumb. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. See. This is embarrassing. It's also embarrassing chugging skills. Really, to talk about that. I guess what are fun. we doing? Oh, and this bro. would happen. This would happen like a lot. Yeah, like this was a thing, dude. I'm surprised you didn't know. This would be like right around your your years I, of drinking. Yeah, oh, I'm aware. Like I like this should be something I'm very familiar with. This craze somehow missed me. Thank God. This is just this is ridiculous. It's like you're, what if. What, what if like a judge in the middle of the courtroom right. somebody, somebody ices you? You gotta do it. Take a knee and go for it. You gotta do it, bro. Ah, uh, bro. Oh, you got me. <laughs> I hate this trend. I'm so glad this couldn't have lasted very long. This is probably like a two month, a two month trend. I mean, it's definitely not a thing anymore. Yeah. Right, just given Thank the fact God. that the uh, Smirnoff ices are not uh, popular, should we but bring it, it back? They won for a long time. Icing or Smirnoff? Yeah, should ice? We, no, should we just start icing people? See if they do it. Yeah, I'm down with it. <laughs> just randomly. <laughs> Here, it's bro. Not, there's no way. Is that really? Uh, Nick, are you just hanging out with bros? Is that the problem? <laughs> Nick looks like a bro. <laughs> yeah. He likes the Lord. Lakers. You Lord. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's this is so true. Yeah. Way to rain on the parade, Ari. Ari. You, you shit on we're not, we're not sharing the like the right. bottle. I'm not licking the bottle and then like giving it to somebody. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't know what the pandemic has to do with icing. I guess you have to get close close enough to somebody to hand it to them. I guess. I'll wear a glove. Problem solved. Yeah, I'm not, I just don't understand what the pandemic has to do with it. <laughs> in a pandemic? <laughs> You're going to talk about grenadine and icing in a pandemic? Oh, Willie Will makes a good point. I did I did uh, find the sword at 
the in the back of T-Mobile one day, and then yeah, I, have you seen how they knight people? No, is it the same you know, they, sword that they the like pull as, from the yeah or whatever? <laughs> yeah, it's the same as like in as they do in England with when that when somebody's knighted, like they're on the knee and then they tap them on each shoulder or whatever. It's pretty. We cool. Found the found the sword and did it. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I like I like beer and smeared off ice. <laughs> oh, look at um, that! You haven't seen this? It's still a thing. Did it on an episode of Below Deck. All right. Well, I'm, I'm sure Steve has seen it because he's he's all in on Below Deck. He loves it now. That's right. I still won't watch it. I just watched the Max episode. That's true. Alcohol kills kill the virus. Anybody that's ever been iced is immune. <laughs> I feel like that's true. Um, should we talk about the quarterbacks, or should we just stay with Goofy? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Before we get to quarterbacks, really quickly, I want to talk about one thing. Okay. Before we get to that, hold on. I'm going to try to pull this up. Yes, here it is. Because there was one thing that captured my attention today that I really think we should discuss. And I, th- you know what it is, too, because I sent this in, but we got to talk about this. Yeah. We got to talk about this lady. There's a lot going on already. Dude. So for those who don't know, this is courtside Karen. (laughs) The Atlanta Hawks are allowing fans into their games. uh, A smattering of fans, not a lot. And she was sitting courtside, which to Ari's, we'll bring back Ari's point (laughs) in the pandemic. pandemic? Out of all the seats to allow... (laughs) I feel like courtside is not the ones. No. But regardless, this lady and her husband get ejected in the middle of this game because they're jawing back and forth with LeBron James, which, by the way, uh, we have to find. I'll I'll bring up the image right now of her husband. Holy crap. (laughs) Like, we're really going to do this right now with her (laughs) husband, um, who's, I would say, you've seen him. What do you think? 60, 70 years old? He's an older gentleman. <laughs> and she's allegedly 25. Oh, boy. Good for him. I mean, she's he's obviously very well off, right? Well, and and found a entitled wife, clearly. Right. So she gets a, she, they get booted. And afterwards, she goes on IG Live and goes on this rant. Oh, no. Listen, let me tell you, LeBron James looked at my husband during the game and passed him out, and I stood up and I go, don't fucking talk to my husband. Talk to my husband one more time, and I will fuck you up. And he started fighting with me, he goes, shut your mouth, dumb bitch. And I go, you shut your fucking mouth, bitch. I do like the thought. <laughs> I, like, I like the thought of LeBron in the middle of a game yeah. at the end of a road trip just being in a really bad mood. And looking over into like the crowd and seeing somebody on the courtside seat, just be like, "Hey, fuck you!" <laughs> just out yeah. of nowhere, just like say, for no reason whatsoever. I want to say it's highly unlikely an NBA player started an altercation with with fans unprovoked. Right? There's no way that guy was heckling him and cursing at him, and probably a little liquored up and saying relatively inappropriate things. Well, no. I, 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 oftentimes when you hear people say this, like, "Oh, he looked over me and said this." Like, well, how many things did you yell at him before? Before. Like, you you heckled him 147 times in a quarter and a half. And then he was like, hey, shut the fuck up. Right. You're like, out of nowhere, he just goes, shut the fuck up. Like, yeah, that didn't happen. Oh, no, you did it. <laughs> and, and even like, why, why would you yell shut the fuck up at somebody that wasn't doing anything? <laughs> that totally makes sense. This is her. Freaking I just can't. Yeah, can't. I think you're a big fan of Karen. Huh? I think you're a big fan of courtside Karen. No, she's the worst. I mean, honestly, it was actually, it was pretty annoying. And I mean, my immediate thought too, it's probably very unfair, but my immediate thought was like, she's called a manager or two over in her life. You know what oh, I mean? And like, she's never, she's never had anything done to her lips either. She had, oh dude, she had one. <laughs> let me see if I can find the Instagram <laughs> post. She had one Instagram post where it was like something along the lines of, 
you know, raising a dog and living the life. It was like, are you serious? And it's in like front of this like luxurious mansion. Like really? Yeah. I like, hate this lady. What, what, her whole timeline is LeBron. No, no, no. This is a uh, courtside uh, Karen. This is, this is when oh, this okay. is what happens when you search courtside Karen. Oh, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> I gotta find the IG. <laughs> I, I, just, I wish she was just posting about it all day. Like all day. She was just posting about LeBron and her interaction. Would be great. Um, these these situations always, almost always involve like this. <laughs> there's there we go. Footage of it. Let's oh see. my god! So grateful for this beautiful life. Uh, there's levels to this shit, I guess. Oh my god! I hate here her. it is. Another day raising Yorkies and living a life of leisure. This lady. <laughs> Might be one of the ten worst people in the U.S. <laughs> that's that's a lot. This saying a lot. She looks like now, she's storming Capitol or two. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> hilarious! <laughs> you interrupted me. Sorry, I was about to say. I wonder who she voted for. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we're both we we're both going the same direction. According to the recent reports. A lot of the people that were at the Capitol trying to stop the steal were trying to stop the steal that they didn't even vote for. So, of course. of course. Well, I didn't vote, but I know everybody else voted for him. We need to stop this. This sounds like um, a bad idea. <laughs> so ridiculous. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, I'm on Team LeBron on this one, John. Oh, of course. Oh, ah, man, I still would like that, though. Just picking a random old man out of the crowd. Just be like, hey, man, fuck you. The guy's like, "What? I'm just sitting here enjoying the game. I haven't said a word the whole night. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and say that's what happened. Yeah, right. I've changed my entire tune. I think that they were just quietly sitting there watching the game, and LeBron decided to start picking on them. <laughs> I don't know where. I wonder. Maybe LeBron. I don't know. I mean, LeBron has been known to pick out courtside fans. I mean, you know the the Jordan Poyer Rachel Bush story, right? Refresh my memory. Uh, you know, Jordan Poyer's on the Buffalo Bills. He was on the mm -hmm. Browns when LeBron was in Cleveland. Uh, he is married to an Instagram model, Rachel Bush, who mm -hmm. is incredibly obnoxious on Twitter. Um, I would highly recommend not following her. But either way, um, she, they were sitting courtside at the game because Poyer was on the Browns. And LeBron, LeBron somehow found out who she was, knew that Poyer was on the Browns, and DM'd her. And he's like, come on. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he does pay attention to who is courtside. So, I mean, maybe he was like, I can cause a cause some friction with this old guy and his young wife. Maybe slide in. Ooh, that's a good one. Show dominance in front of her. Yeah. Kick them out of a game. Yeah. And then just Look be like, you never want to get kicked out again. Yeah. Oh, you think you're powerful because you can sit courtside during a pandemic? I can show you some things. <laughs> I'm LeBron James, motherfucker. Although I don't, I don't think, even though you know, courtside Karen is a clearly a trophy wife. I don't think she's that much of a trophy that LeBron would would exercise this plan. I wonder how they met. Hmm, that's a great. What's the conversation like? I'm gonna say it was on. It was, it was on a website that connects wealthy men with younger women. <laughs> <laughs> Just an assumption. Or there's maybe there's some like some weird like country club that like in Atlanta where you can make those sorts of connections. That she was hanging outside of? They'd never be in the same place at the same time for any other reason. Yeah, there's no shot. Oh no. Oh, you're uh -oh. gone. We're missing uh -oh. your luxurious locks. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, like, why would they ever like be hanging out at the same place? Yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah, like Starbucks, I guess. It will, and it would have to be somewhere where she know she 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 saw that he had money, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like the oh bank. God, this is terrible. At the, at the bank, like he, he, made, made, a, he made it like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar withdrawal, and she was next in line. Or she was the teller. Wow. She was the teller. <laughs> wow. I think, we, that. I think we've solved this mystery. <laughs> she worked at a chase. 
He he withdrew two hundred fifty thousand, and she gave him the two hundred fifty thousand and her number. Right, and she was yeah. like, "Look, just like anything else, bro, if you invest in this, you're gonna get some good returns. Let's go. Also, some bad ones, but let's be, one of- let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we've we've figured out this mystery. Oh, another one solved. I think nope. we're you know we're on to it. We've got it, and uh, we move on. We can, we can congratulate each other and say job well done once again, sir. So you wanted to talk about quarterbacks, farmers only. Well, a, a couple. A, I mean, a couple of reasons. I, I guess uh, the market is is so intriguing to me. Um, but like, qu- quarterback is so above and beyond the most important position, unless. You know, I've said this before. Unless you can, you can get a really cheap quarterback and build the rest of the roster, and somebody that is you know capable of winning you games, um, if, if you're going to pay a market rate for a quarterback, it's got to be you know somebody that's going to be unbelievable. And I think we're seeing more and more like how valuable it is, but how this market is going to go. Uh, the golf for Stafford deal is pretty crazy. And it's it it's only going to get nuts more nuts I think because they're you know what is some if you can pay that much and I understand the reason that you have to do it is because the contract but you're going to get that much return for Stafford. What the fuck is Deshaun Watson? Gonna get? I mean the, the 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 rumors were three first round picks and two defensive starters. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know if that's enough. Well, I but I also think I think we like because they keep hearing this. I think we keep forgetting that the contract was a really big part of that, though, right? Like huge part. You, you you keep hearing that, like, man, if Stafford got this, what is Deshaun Watson going to get? And Deshaun Watson is going to get a lot, but you're not like trying to offload just an albatross of a contract as well. Like Stafford, I think is worth like all things like equal, right? If there's no contract like that. One first round pick, right? You flop the, you flip that over, you get Matt Stafford and whatever you need to do to make the money work. But like, I think that's kind of getting lost here. So I still think like three first round picks and a quality player can land you a Deshaun Watson. And I think we're just kind of getting all excited about this and not realizing still or not equating the fact that that contract, which is a lot for oh, very course. little at the quarterback position. Yeah, yeah. Like, and by the way, you think about this too. It's not even just that. It's the fact that you and you, we've talked about this all the time. Not only are you getting Jared Goff, but you're not getting Jared Goff under Sean McVay, right? Who maximizes his quarterbacks. Sure. <laughs> you're getting Jared Goff and all of his flaws without the guy who can oh, you don't think, here make him better. You don't think the knee biter is going to be good for Jared Goff? I would say no. Putting no. him consistently on third and 11s and then telling them to go bite a kneecap <laughs> off. Like, what's no, Dan, Dan. What's the play call? He's like, just go fuck him up. And I'm like, no, Dan. Dan, I need to know what we're doing here. Bite a bite kneecap. Let's go. Rub some dirt in it. Like, like, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, before, I, I have I have one point that I've been obsessed with about Jared Goff since the trade happened um, that I'll, I'll get to it in a second. But what do you think Stafford does with the Rams? In terms of, like, statistics or what they what, what their ceiling like, is as a team? What? Yeah. How much better can they be? I think they can be in like an NFC Championship game type team. I mean, think about it. They, they weren't that far away from it this year, right? Their defense, if they remain largely intact, could still be one of the better ones in the NFL. Stafford raises their ceiling offensively because he's a legitimate downfield passer. He's got a big arm. He's I think he's he's a really good quarterback, man. And so now you get you get McVay, who again is going to raise his floor and his ceiling in that kind of a system. They were a game away from the NFC Championship game this year. What stops them from going to the NFC Championship game next year? Yeah, no, I, I think they can win it. I mean, right. I think they not the NFC. I think I mean they could be there with the Chiefs. It could be Rams Chiefs in the Super mm-hmm. Bowl. Um, God, what if it was like that Monday Night Football game? Oh, it'd be was so two, good. Two years. Two years like, how fun was that offense? You know what I mean? Like we've like I, I know it was like a little bit ago, and I say this whole we thing, but like I think we is like the collective we like really forget how good that freaking offense was. And just imagine how good that offense could be now that with a guy like yeah. Matthew Stafford. Yeah. Like, dude, Matthew Stafford, remember the Jim Bob Cooter year? Like, Stafford was incredible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, now imagine Sean McVay is his fucking quarter, like his play caller. 
That's going to yeah. be nuts what he's going to be able to do with him. And Stafford didn't miss a game this year. He played through pain after missing a bunch of games last right. year. Um, so the, the, the durability thing I don't think is as much of a concern, but I do think the I do think his body is limited by the injuries the last couple of years, and he's not quite the player he was a few years ago. But I think with McVay, the combination of McVay and getting into a different system and getting you know some other weapons around him, uh, and having that really good defense, so he doesn't have to worry about scoring fifty points a game. Uh, I think that makes up for whatever limitations he has from the from the back injuries the last couple of years. So I, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be incredible uh, to watch what he can do with that team. Um, but you know, other teams are getting better too. Depends. Like, where does Deshaun Watson go? Mm-hmm. Does he go? I mean, I think it's going to be Jets or Dolphins at this point. We're kind of looking at. But if he, if he went to, if we had like some big surprise, you know. That could that could change the outlook of the entire league, but I think already this trade has kind of changed the power dynamics of things at the top of the NFC for sure. Uh, but I'm really fascinated to see where. And, and oh, by the way, what if Aaron Rodgers? What if what if somebody reaches out, somebody makes some deal? Because the you know I, I'm wondering what the real truth is, but the reports are that the front office is done with Rodgers, but the coaching staff is not. Like who wins that battle? And if he is gone. And if he does want a new contract to come back, and the front office is like, "No, we're tr- we're trading you," um, that that could change everything too, dude. If the Colts went and got uh, Aaron Rodgers, like that's another team too. To, like if they just got any sim, like Philip Rivers, I will say, uh, Philip Rivers did much better than I thought he was he was going to. But Phil Rivers was like a like a high upside game manager this year, you know. He was not a guy who was going to be dynamic with his arm and win like, you know, 350 yard passing game, like three touchdowns, those type of games. He was never really going to be that guy. Boy, if Indianapolis with their defense too, which, you know, quality top 10, not one of the best ones ever, but a quality top 10 defense, watch out. Next year is going to be great with all these quarterbacks and these next month, what's going to happen. And think about it. It's just a quarterback centric offseason because it's not even just a quarterback's and free agency and trades. The draft class is loaded with quarterbacks too. And what that's going to mean for like next year, it's fucking nuts. Yeah. It's it's going to be wild. And I, I can't wait to see how the rest of this offseason plays out. And I'm, I'm still interested in see if the Raiders are a factor. If the Raiders are, you know, thinking about trying to make a big move with somebody. Because I, I think that they're happy with Carr. But like this shows you it has to, it ha- you have to try to get better, you know, at the quarterback position. Um, unless you, unless you're just going to work with rookies and younger players, and then build the rest of your roster, and just hope that they're good enough. It's really your only two options. I think if we're if we're talking about the Raiders, I'll say this, and maybe you agree with me or not. If you go into this off season and your goal is, let's tinker with the quarterback position. What were you watching for 16 fucking games? <laughs> right. right, like. I would probably have quarterback well, probably near the bottom of the list at this point in terms of issues with this team going into next year. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> there's always it's always yeah, but I guess. So, like the, the Raiders did have issues on offense. Mm, they're yeah, still ter- they're still terrible in the red zone. Um, they still turn the ball over way too much. Like there is things, and so I I I also made the case like they are so far away on defense. That that's not going to be fixed in a year or probably even two. Gus Bradley can help a little bit. Um, you can invest, you know, find somebody in free agency, then draft two two players that you know are good, and you can start to turn things around. But I think they're so far away. Like my thought was, all right, you you tra- if you traded for Deshaun Watson and got Allen Robinson, now all of a sudden you're you're just you can probably outscore people. You can, can probably you? be like uh, yes. Or is Gruden, gonna, is Gruden going to, you know, go run, run, pass the entire time, settle for field goals inside the twenty yard line, and still run the exact same conservative garbage that he's been running since he's been back? I mean, I get, but I guess you, like, could, you could I, probably. I honestly think a quarterback at Deshaun Watson's level would be, dare I say, wasted in a system like with what Gruden's going to do. Like, there's no I don't engineer, know, man. There's no, yeah, but I think Deshaun Watson is such a playmaker that he could overcome some of that. Like there is opportunity. There's opportunities at times. Like we've talked but about this. Car Carr was very good. Carr was like a like right around tenth in the league in, in terms of his quarterback play this year. That's really good. But to me, like I I don't like 
I don't ex- – I was going to say third. I can't accept any argument that Deshaun Watson's outside the top four. Okay. No, I get that. I think we're kind of like my, – my point is t- kind of to yours, right? Even if you get Watson, they're a 9-7, and 10-16? and 16? But Probably I, in the playoffs. I guess, Give but like you're not, you're not realistically competing with that defense, right? You're not realistically competing for a Super Bowl at all. Right, like your defense wouldn't even be in the level of like Kansas City, where Kansas City is the cliche. They are bend but do not break. They are like fuck this. We have a really good offense. We just have to be good in the red zone, and like that's it. If we just give up field goals and the occasional touchdown, we're going to be fine because our dude's going to score at least twenty-seven to thirty-two points every single time out, and we can probably get out of these games no matter what's going to happen. Like you wouldn't even be at that level, right? Like my point is, and I guess to yours, like. If you're coming into this offseason and what your goal is, if you really want to push for competing, like I think all of the focus should be defensively because that, to me, Carr in that offense is something that you can get by enough with that you can make that – like you'll essentially be in the same spot, right? Improve the defense for the long term and push for 9-7, and 10-6 and six with Carr or fuck the defense, trade away assets, get Deshaun Watson and Allen Robinson and push for 9-7, and 10-6, and six, but at least you have Deshaun Watson. You know what I mean? I mean, in, in a, a young Deshaun Watson, by the way. Right. Who, if you had him for the rest of his career, which that's no you know guarantee, but... I was going to say, not a guarantee. If you had, like, let's say you had him for the rest of his career, that's another, what, 10, 12 years? Mm-hmm. You could have him, and you'd have a chance to... You'd have a chance to be in the mix for all that time. Now, the, I, I was on the all-defense camp for, you know, going into the offseason, for sure. But also, like you look around, and you're like, well, you're already being in some cap trouble, and you, you, it, the, the Deshaun Watson deal is weird because he actually is very cheap this year, in a year that you need somebody cheap because the cap is going to go way down. Um, so like that is that is a real like wild card of the Deshaun Watson scenario. His contract doesn't kick in until next year, so you you'd actually you'd have a one year where the cap is going to be way down, where teams are going to be struggling to get under that cap. Uh, to to actually have some flexibility there with him, and then the contract goes through the roof next year. Um, but that would be one little factor. Um, but but like to me, like the defense is going to be so hard to fix. You're so far away from fixing it that maybe you just maybe you say fuck it and go with him. Um, I, and this was this is also kind of leading to uh, the Brady. Come on, you can't be sending us stories at this time. Way, way too late. Um, so. So, Brady, uh, work on that voice yet? <laughs> you just don't like Brady's voice. It's not. It's not <laughs> nice. Um, I don't know. I, I think this the the point to me is that there's the only team in the league that shouldn't be looking at Deshaun Watson is the Chiefs. Oh right, that's it. Beginning and end of the list. And you know, I, I oh I, you know, Chargers maybe just because Herbert's contract is so good for four more years. But Deshaun Watson would be an upgrade for every team in the league. You know, maybe not Tampa because Brady was really good this year, but he's only going to have one more year. Mm-hmm. He'd be an upgrade for every single team in the league. So I, I don't think anybody should be ruled out oh. of uh, of going for him. Yeah, I would 100% agree with that. And my my just, I guess my basic philosophy is like, I don't, I'm not against trading car, but I think trading car, the mentality should be. We're trading car because we're stripping this bad boy down. Let's let's get what we can for him, and let's just kind of let's try to retool this. But having said that, I don't know if you want to trust Mike Mayock with completely rebuilding your team <laughs> because I don't think track record has been very good for Mike Mayock. Especially, Mayock especially defense. Especially defense. They've missed way too often on defense. I mean, come on, look, look. He's a fun guy, but you can't swing and miss on a safety like that in the first round. No, no. <laughs> like. With such an obvious flaw like that, and like the reason, and I get it, it's media appearances, but like I'm tired of hearing of this bullshit about the Raiders and like he's a silver and black type of guy. He's an out, like, stop. Like, let's start trap. Huh? What does that mean? He can't cover anybody? Like, yeah, right. Like, I'm tired of this straight line speed bullshit. Like, let's start like drafting guys and developing guys and, 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 actually knowing how to evaluate them as college players and how they're going to fit into a system and how good they're going to potentially be. And then don't come out in the offseason 
with some weird backhanded garbage comments about Henry Ruggs and how you were disappointed in him in this year. <laughs> and then all the criticisms are things you probably should have seen on film when he was coming out of college and why he was the third of those three wide receivers that were going to potentially go in the first round. Uh, uh, some of us had him, had him fourth or lower, John. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's ridiculous, but that's just me. Oh, craziness. So let me uh let me get back to this point. And okay. I don't know if this I don't know if this was talked about. I doubt it because it's it's my obsession. But uh, I got some tweets today that that the the, the our show, your co founder company, was discussing Detroit. Okay. Um, were you on the show? No, it was Candy. No, it was it was Candy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't know how it came up, but it, it will come up for me in this context, which is to me the biggest part of the Watson, or excuse me, the uh, the golf Stafford trade. Um, Jared Goff has a girlfriend who I would place in the top five most attractive girls I've ever seen in my life. Okay. She is a model. Is there any way she's going to Detroit with him? Well, no, but why would she have to? What do you think? She just, just stay in LA? Yeah. Like, come on. It's 2021. <laughs> like, they, live, they live together. I don't care. We should, they're rich enough. Get another house. <laughs> So you're saying like, like I was like, I can't remember. Oh, it was like, so it was when Kobe passed away. Right. So it, and I, I had made the mistake. I thought Kobe was in, because if you remember LeBron had passed some milestone in which he had passed Kobe and they were playing in Philadelphia and LeBron had passed Kobe like two days prior with some weird milestone where there's like points or assists or whatever it was. Right. And so I made the mistake. I was talking with humans and I was like, oh yeah. And I thought, you know, wasn't Kobe there to watch the game? And he goes, you really had Kobe in Philadelphia the day before he passed away? I'm like, yeah, it's 2021. Like, that's an easy fucking flight. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, like, to this point, sure. like, I think it's pretty easy to keep in touch. You know, 18, <laughs> what it was, 25, 24 weeks out of the season or out of the year, whatever, you got to be in Detroit. All right, see you later. To, to keep in touch, sure. But that's a, that's a significant, when you count, like, OTAs and all the other things you have to do, especially as a quarterback. Adam, Adam, I'm going to give you a girlfriend who supports your lifestyle and makes millions upon millions of dollars. Do you think you'd be able to be separated from them for a while? If you're guaranteed to stay within that lifestyle, sure, I think but it, it does put strain on a relationship. I would imagine if you're living that far apart, what is what strain? <laughs> hey baby, the game pack came in today. Another cool 1.1 mil. Is what your, do we need? is your wife sleeping right now? Yeah. Can you, I'd love to ask her if she'd be cool living apart half the year from you. If like I was a millionaire, opposite, the opposite coast. If I was a millionaire, yeah, we did it for we did it for sixteen weeks when we were for poor. for a weekend at a time. I mean, I was gone every weekend, and I was gone for four days at a time. That's she had that, a newborn that's, kid. That's okay. That's but that's every weekend you're going back and forth. So now, are we is 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 uh, golf going to fly back and forth like on the off days? Why not? Like I don't, th- I don't think so. You don't think he's got like some private jet? Sure, of course he does, but that's a long flight too. No. You're now your whole off day. So if you're off Tuesday, now your whole off day is just spent traveling. Who cares? Let's fly her out there every once in a while. All right, this is great. I I just like to think that he gets traded. She sees like a, a breaking news flash on her, like she gets a notification on Twitter, like. Jared Goff has been traded to the Lions, and she immediately is just like, "All right, I'm out." I'm she done. just texts him immediately that like, this isn't going to work out. <laughs> she goes, "Is this true?" And he's like, "Yeah, we're going. To- yeah, baby, we're going to Detroit." She's like, "Well, one of us." <laughs> my uh, my text would be, "Are you still a millionaire?" And if he says yes, I'd be like, "I'm in." I think she like she's a model. That's true. If, she, if she's a model, I don't know that she's like a superstar model. Like, I don't know how much she's making. Um, mm-hmm. But, I, like, I mean, she has she has some. Are you looking for her? I just want to look up her net worth. Uh, it's Kristen Harper. C-H-R-I-S-T-E-N. 1.5 million. All right. So she's got money of her own. That's not a lot. That's just, I mean, right. it's, it's, it's not lot, Jared Goff money. No, <laughs> it's not Goff money. I will say she did seem to like him on Hard Knocks. She Dang. like she, she seemed into him. Yeah, Jared, Goff is some... worth, Jared Goff is worth thirty million dollars. Yeah, baby, uh, I'll be fine. Let's move to Detroit. 
<laughs> no, I I think Detroit gets a bad like a bad rap. Like I'm obviously you know I'm wearing a well, Tigers hat and a Red Wings shirt right now, so and I'm from Detroit, but but that's um, the other part about it. If you're rich, any city's nice. <laughs> like you don't think you can find the nicest part of any city. Yeah, but if you're if you're living in LA and all of a sudden you have to like get those scrapers for your window every day and you have to like get the automatic start car that you can start 20 minutes before you leave for anywhere to, to make sure it warms up enough so you can actually drive around. You really don't think like, that they have an automatic starting car right now. But you're not using it the way that you would. <laughs> so dude, it's so it's frustrating. Expense. You have to start the car like remotely from in the house like 20 minutes before you want to go anywhere. Oh, I know. Oh, it is just a disaster. Like I like Detroit, but there's there's reasons I'll never go back there. But yeah, but you're also thinking about it from your popper point of view, not millionaire mansion I'm, point of view. I'm a, I'm a popper. Yeah, but right. I, like I saw, I'm sure you've seen the pictures of Matt Stafford's house that he's selling. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Yep. Like on the lake, incredible house. But every time I look at it, I'm like, yeah, but it's it it doesn't always look like that. It's usually like overcast and snow covered and it's a nightmare to deal with. You got a shovel. I guess. Yeah, yep. Matthew Stafford was out there shoveling. Yes. That's right. Jared yes. Goff and Kristen, whatever her <laughs> name is, are going to be doing Harper. the exact same thing. Yep. It's going to be a you tough life for him out in Detroit. I envision Jared sending her out to, to shovel <laughs> so he can get to work. Right. <laughs> They're bickering. Like Jared, That's... did you, did you shovel the yard yet? And they're like, oh, God damn it, Kristen, like <laughs> you shut up. Can you just do it one time? All you've done is complain since you've moved out here. Yes. So that's how I think that's how their relationship is going. Because because Jared won't because Goff won't shovel the walk. He won't salt the ice. <laughs> I don't like that you just so easily do, like easily throw everything out just because if you're rich it's fine. Right. It is. <laughs> like just nothing matters anymore. It doesn't. So what what could cause a problem in the relationship that if like everything's just fine all the time because you have money? I mean, when he loses the money, he's not gonna lose that. I've, you never know. We don't know, Jared. I mean, he's kind of dumb. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't bad investment where the, where the sun rises. Bad investment, yeah. Invest in That's a company fair. where you know, like with pens. It's a company that makes pens with coffee. You know, like little injections of caffeine inside the pen for college kids. He's like, this is a great idea. It's a great idea. <laughs> so so you think Detroit can't ruin them, but a, a bad investment in stupid pens could. Could, of course. <laughs> okay. All right. At least, at least there's something. At least we can draw the right. line somewhere. I like it. All right. That seems like the perfect point to end it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, We'll be back, of course, on Mondays as usual, same time. We appreciate everybody who's been in here. We should come out with, like, a really cool, like, sign-off, but I don't know what to say. So, see ya.